Well, we're going to go ahead and get started anyway. I'd like to introduce you all to Rayleigh Fraser, who won for her cover poetry at the 2013 Cowboy Festival. And here's Rayleigh now. <laughs> hey, everyone. So I'm pretty new at the whole cowgirl poetry thing. This is only my second performance, really. I was, I kind of just entered this uh, cowboy festival competition thing for cowgirl poetry in March, and I ended up winning it, so I kind of just carrying on with my poetry a little bit. So the first one I'm gonna um, say for you is called Corby, and it's about a bottle-fed lamb that we had on our farm. Um, he was quite the character, and I named him Corby because he was born bald, and I had a bald Uncle Corby, so it kind of just fit. <laughs> so here is Corby. Started on a sunny March day a year or two ago. A sick lamb was born, so to school, I did not go. I stayed home to help mom with the lifeless little guy. He wouldn't eat, but I kept giving her a try. Everyone kept telling me I was wasting my time, but giving up on this little fella just felt like a crime. So I kept trying and trying till he finally fed. So I made him a basket. He slept next to my bed. A few days in, he was getting better to our surprise. That lamb thought I was mom, I soon realized. I was up with the bottle all night through. What the heck had I gotten myself into? So we soon realized with this lamb we were stuck. So we gave him a name, Corby, master of luck. You see the funny thing about Corby? He didn't think he was a sheep. Up on the deck with the dogs is where he'd sleep. His bow wasn't quite a bow, more like a bark. He'd run away to the neighbors and come home after dark. That Corby sheep, he had no respect for barbed wire. He'd come and go through fences whenever he didn't desire. He liked to sleep in the garden and ruin the flower bed. That's what Dad would say. We should have knocked him on the head. So this next poem was my first poem I wrote, and it was in my grade 10 poetry class. And I was supposed to choose like a article of clothing or something that just kind of represented who I was, so I chose to write about my riding boots. They're ripped and tattered with a few holes in the side, but no other boots would I wear for a ride. They walked through creeks and heaps of mud, and stepped in a few piles of crud. Those old boots have walked many miles in a grind, like that time that old mare left me behind. You can put me in sneakers, sandals, or heels, but nothing can compare to how those boots feel. Some might say it's time for a new pair, Finding boots so perfect is something too rare. My old ragged boots, they're much more than just a shoe. Because when I wear my boots, my true colors shine through. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I grew up outside a barrier in a place called the Squam Bay Valley. And um, I wrote a poem about living in the valley because I feel like where I grew up really shaped who I am today. And this one is called Valley Girl. I grew up in a quiet valley not far from here, where a day goes bad and a horseback ride secure. Where your closest neighbor is half a mile away, and your backyard is 50 acres for play. I grew up loving horses and ride, loving horses and chasing sheep. I always had a 4-H steer or two to keep. Where I come from, it was always work before play. Summer days were spent bailing the hay. A warm summer night, we'd dance under the moon, light a fire and crank up a good country tune. Up early for six for a long bus ride to school. Learn to do by doing was our golden rule. Dad taught us how to drive that old brown truck, and the curse is to say when we got that truck stuck. I grew up on Cotton Eye Joe. This is the life I'll always know. Not the life for me, some city folk might say, but this country girl would have it no other way. Okay, so where I come from, the we have like coyotes and bears and all sorts of predators like that that come around. But our biggest enemy is these little gophers. They come around and dig holes and they're just horrible things. So I wrote a poem about my first experience hunting a gopher. We were eight years old, bored and looking for some fun. Dad made us a bet, shoot a gopher with a pellet gun. We were up for the challenge, 50 bucks on the line. So we set off, gun in hand, feeling just fine. We were sneaking around the field just like Bonnie and Clyde. Looking for a gopher, my best pal by my side. We were patiently waiting for a gopher to come out and play, but no gophers were coming out that day. Just when we were about to pack her in, we heard an awful squeak and both began to grin. We both, we both knew that sound all too well, so I lifted my gun, pulled the trigger, and that gopher fell. 
To our surprise, he let out an awful sound. He was trying to get away, dragging a leg on the ground. So over we ran to that gopher who was only hurt. He was squealing and rolling around in the dirt. Meanwhile, Dad heard the ruckus and thought, oh no. So he got up and he watched from the window. To his surprise, he watched as we turned our guns around. And with the butts of our guns, we beat that gopher into the ground. And with that, that gopher, he was good and dead. Put him left in there, but we had an idea instead. We were just so darn proud of that gopher who had died, so we nailed him to a board, and we skinned his hide. <laughs> and to this day, that gopher is still nailed to a board, but we never did get our $50 reward. <laughs> She's kind of a stubborn horse, but I love her. And this is my poem about Whitaker. Let me tell you a little bit about my old mare. If you ask my dad, he'd tell you we're the perfect pair. At first glance, she looks awfully kind. But get up in that saddle, you'd soon change your mind. When you're all ready to go, she just wants to go slow. When it's time to slow down, she'll stomp her feet on the ground. How about that time I thought hunting horseback would be fun? Well, I'll tell you, that mare, she stepped on my gut. Quite the princess, if you ask me. If you see her near a creek, I think you'd agree. Play tug of war with that mare for an hour, I bet. No way she'd step in that creek and get her feet wet. Now, fellas, I'm sure you're all familiar with PMS, but I can assure you, my mare does crazy female the best. While riding through the trees, I ought to keep my eyes peeled. She'll knock me off with a branch and make a run for the field. I've got scars to prove how mean she can be, but the bumps and bruises, they're all worth it, you see. That old mare, she may be a pain in my behind, but I love her all the same, because we're two of a kind. Is she the one you fell off of? No, she's the one that didn't break my <laughs> That was the new one that did that.